So moving on from Enneagram, I know you're a huge advocate for self-love. So can you talk about that journey, your self-love journey first? Yeah. You know, I think that growing up, I think especially as women in our society, we're trained to doubt ourselves. We're trained to like make ourselves as small as possible in every way. And I, I did a lot of reprogramming as I grew, right? So, and I think that started really in my photography journey. I started out as a photographer and started doing boudoir photography and getting to know women and talking to them. And I would say my boudoir photography started as like, let's edit you. Let's make you like as like perfect as possible. Let's polish everything. And then through meeting women, talking to them, asking them what they love about themselves, what their partners loved about them, I something just changed in me. I think you can't spend a ton of time with other people in their underwear for like that much time without starting to see every body is beautiful and wow. every individual is interesting. And I just started to fall in love with all types of people. And, and I realized that if I'm able to see you and just love everything about you, then why would that be so hard to do to myself, right? And and I'm overcomplicating this relationship that I have to myself. And so through that, and then I went through a divorce and just had this chance to fall in love with myself again and give myself this chance of my, my undivided attention. I cultivated this like deeply loving and like a deep friendship with myself. Mm-hmm. And it became so natural. I forgot that other people weren't experiencing that. And my partner, he really struggled with it. He was a four and he really struggled with self-worth. And we would go through conversations and I would just hear him and how hard he was on himself and how self-neglecting he can be sometimes. And I just realized like everybody needs this. Everybody needs this like relationship, this tenderness that is available to us. Um, if it, and if you have it with yourself, you can have it constantly. Give us more insight on what was shifting, you know, from from the how you were before, how you saw yourself before to like how you are now, like how much you you love yourself. Like how did you make that change? Because a lot of people are still struggling through that. Yeah. You know, I think it started for me with body image and I think I'm so glad it didn't end there. I think oftentimes we think self-love is like, I'm beautiful. I'm hot. Like this kind of sense of I can look in the mirror and like what I see, which I I want that for everybody. I love that for everyone. But I think what's more exciting is body neutrality, this sense of like my body is the least interesting thing about me. And I am like getting to know myself. So I think this journey and I think the Enneagram is this beautiful access point to understanding yourself in these deep and intricate ways, the way you would a lover or a friend, where you are asking them interesting questions, you're listening to their answers, um, you're giving yourself like true time and attention and exploration so that you you feel valued, you feel respected. I think through that as well, you build trust, right? Like what mm-hmm. does every relationship need? Every relationship needs you to be interested in me, right? You need to think I'm worth my ta- your time. I need consistency. I need respect. I need reliability, right? So giving that to myself just as much as I would want a partner to give that to me or I would give that to someone I love. I love that. And I, I want to echo that part about like my body's the least interesting part about me. I really like that because I think a lot of people struggle with loving their body. Mm-hmm. Like it's hard mm-hmm. to go from hating to loving, right? Mm-hmm. But what if you just like see past it and like there's so much more that's interesting about you. You have yeah. so much depth in your personality that you can learn to embrace and love. So mm-hmm. I think that's a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Me too. And I think sometimes we think like, my body has to be a certain way in order for someone else to love me. So we get preoccupied with our bodies. Um, But if you think about people you've loved, truly loved, you don't care. Like, we don't care. Like, these little flaws in them become these beautiful intricacies of what we love about them the most. And that's the love we're trying to attract anyway. So being obsessed with if our body's perfect or not, we're just attracting love that we don't even want or a fake version of love. Right. What would you say would be the hardest obstacle that you had to overcome in this self-love journey? I would say 
other people's opinions about what a confident woman is allowed to be or how confident you're allowed to be as a woman. I think it's almost, especially if you are societal, like so for some of my friends who are like much more like societally attractive, you know, they have like all the things you're supposed to have or whatever. When you embrace that confidence, sometimes comes with backlash. Mm -hmm. And I think what you have to do is continue to choose yourself because at the end of the day, you will be the only one who's there with you, right? Like you have to be able to live with you. That is the most important thing. It impacts everything else. So if we can start with that access point of how can I hold soft, nurturing, loving, curious space for myself every second of every day, then I will be able to hold soft, encouraging, loving space for everyone else. And ultimately, like my my presence is going to be a source of healing, whether it makes someone uncomfortable or not. 